Well, look at you all knee-deep in nerd plastic right now. Yeah, dude, I got a ton of models to put together and no time to do it. You know, I could cut all those pieces off there for you. I'm good at cutting people and stuff. Yeah, that'd actually be a ton of help. Thanks. Not a problem at all. Hey, welcome back, hobby friends. You know, the more that we spend time together and I get to know you in the comment section of my videos, the more I realize that each of us has a different aspect of the hobby that we enjoy more and enjoy less. Maybe it's a certain part of the painting process, like the base coating or highlighting things up or creating depth of shadows. Maybe it's basing the models, or maybe it's actually assembling them. And when it comes to assembling miniatures, it's safe to say I'm kind of on both sides of the fence on this one. On one hand, I like to sit down and put together a couple of models that I really like and relax. Sit back, listen to a podcast that I really enjoy, something like Trapped Under Plastic. But on the other hand, when I have a big amount of models and I sit and think about how much time it's gonna take me to clean off every single one of those stinking mold lines, I just, I can't do it. No, not gonna do that. And I have tried all sorts of different tools and techniques for building my models efficiently over the years, but I've never really sat down and focused on which is the best. So today we're gonna do that. We are going to test different aspects of the miniature building process to find out which is in fact the fastest and the cleanest end result for our models. Oh, and when we're done with that part, I'm gonna do something stupid, really stupid. The first step of assembling our models is to take our sprue and remove the bits from the sprue itself. Now, unless you're a nihilist that likes to take your thumb and push the models out, you're gonna have to go to some kind of a clippers. The first kind of clippers is just a basic edge clippers that you get at any home improvement store that aren't made for this task. The biggest issue with these is typically their edges are slightly curved or beveled, which leads to an imprecise cut on the bits of the sprue. The next snipper option also comes from a big box home improvement store or your local hardware store. That's a side snips that's got a flat edge. These are a market upgrade from the other ones and you're gonna wanna buy these for your entry level snippers. Now they tend to be a bit dull and that means that you don't get a nice precise cut where the piece of your model meets the support sprue and it can mean for more cleanup later. By and large, they do just fine. The next snipper options are those marketed to us by miniature manufacturers and miniature paint manufacturers. Now there is a pretty big swing in what they offer. By and large, they're not much different than those basic ones we can get at the home improvement store. They just cost quite a bit more. One thing you wanna look for is a nice long end of the snippers, meaning they can get into really tight spots and snip nice little bits where they connect to the sprue. By and large, do a great job. If you already have one of these, it's probably gonna serve you fine. Our final snipping option are what I would call the high-end luxury brand snippers. Now these can go anywhere from 30 to 60, 70 or more dollars. Really what they do different than the others is a couple of things. First, the actual action of the handle is much smoother. Most times it's not a big deal, but they are extremely sharp and extremely small in where they can snip a bit off, which means you're left with next to nothing left behind most of the time. They're also kind of brittle though. So when you use these, only use them for snipping small bits off of the sprue. Use a cheap one if you're trying to chop up bigger bits and bits of resin. Today's video was brought to us by Anycubic with their 3D printers and 3D printing accessories. The true thorn in my side, the size of a Cadillac when it comes to 3D printing cleaning is getting all that sticky, dangerous resin off of the models and getting it all cured. That's a giant pain in the butt. And that's where Anycubic's new wash and cure station comes in. This thing has been a complete game changer for me when it comes to cleaning up my resin prints. No longer do I have to worry about getting dangerous resin anywhere or finding a space to clean everything up and jerry-rigging some kind of UV light in order to cure the models correctly. Paired with my Photon Mono X, I now get to print tons of models in mass due to its large print bed and cleaned and cured super quick and easily. 
A big thank you to Anycubic for supporting the channel. I put a link in the video description to Anycubic site if you want to check out their 3D printers and accessories. Now after our bits are off of the sprue, it's time to clean up the slight burrs left behind and more importantly, all the mold lines over the model. And here we've got a lot of options how we can approach this task. Our first options for cleaning are of the bladed variety and there are plenty of hobby knives out there on the market, many of which are fairly similar. Some have a little bit more ergonomic handle. Some have a built-in safety measure to keep the blade safely put away. And then there's always just a standard old box cutter that uh, work for some heavy duty projects, but I don't like to use them on my smaller models. There's also a bunch of other specific products on the market trying to achieve the same cleaning process like this Games Workshop machined tool here that just doesn't seem to get into any of the nooks and crannies, so you struggle to clean your models with it. There's also this interesting thing by Monument Hobbies that kind of looks like a dental tool and has a very similar sharp machined edge, but allows you to get into the deeper crevices. Now I've used this a bit and it seems pretty cool and useful. I just don't have enough practice with it yet to really determine that. So we're gonna test that out today. Next up are little miniature files, which are a great tool to have in our tool belt as miniature painters. I find that these work really well for cleaning off resin models, whether 3D printed or purchased, as well as metal models. I find that with plastic, they're a bit too harsh and they leave a bit too much of a grain left behind, but they are still a good thing to have. And then we have good old high grit sandpaper. If you are super anal retentive and you want to make sure that everything is as smooth as humanly possible, a good eight to 1200 grit sandpaper will do you just fine. I find that this stuff really isn't necessary for almost any of my model building, so we're not gonna use that today. And then finally, our little sanding stick buddy right here. These have a lower grit sandpaper on one side, great for just quickly sanding off those burrs, and then a higher grit sandpaper on the other side so we can quickly go over all of our mold lines and erase them in seconds. It also is slightly squishy in the center so it can conform to any tight spaces on your models while you're sanding through. And we're definitely gonna test this guy out today. So how do we determine which of these tools works best for our model cleaning needs? Well, I'm gonna pit them head to head and do a little timed race to see which one can clean the model fastest all while being held to the same standard of quality for how clean each of the mold lines is at the end. Our first contestant is the standard sharp hobby knife. Now this guy is great at removing the little bits of sprue and burrs left behind on the model because it's so sharp. Also it's tiny little tip ensures that it can get into every little crack and crevice to remove the mold lines. The problem is, because it's so sharp, you have to be very careful that it doesn't dig into your model unnecessarily or remove too much of the flash and actually cut into the model itself. Because of this, I found myself going a little bit slower than I wanted to to make sure I didn't damage my model in the process of cleaning it. Next up is a dull old hobby knife. Now this one has seen much better days and I always keep one of these around. This one's still sharp enough to remove our bits of sprue and burrs from the model, but it allows us to go much faster over all of the mold lines. And it just pulls them off really easily without digging into the model. And by and large, I can still get into all the cracks and crevices. Next up is our Monument Hobbies Machine Edge Dental Tool looking guy. And as I said, I don't have a lot of experience with this thing. So a lot of it was kind of a learning process for me to find the right angle and how best to hold this tool. But it worked really slick once I got the hang of it. I think that my timer would have increased with this tool over time the more I got used to using it. But it was great in that it could get everywhere I needed to get and it could just slide over the mold lines in one fell swoop and remove them. And our final contestant was our double-sided sanding stick here. The rough side made short work of all of our little bits of burrs and sprue that was still attached to the model with no time at all. I then switched to the nice, smooth, high grit side and could just fly over all those mold lines. It conformed to the shape, so I didn't have to go over a section multiple times like I often have to do with the blade to make sure I get all the mold line removed. And this thing, this thing worked like a dream. 
Now, as you can tell by our results here, we're all pretty close in final timing, and they were all held to the same high standard of a nice, clean, finished model with no mold lines remaining. But our winner is the sanding stick. So when we get to the next step of our journey today, we are going to be utilizing him to see him in action. Oh, and as always, I will include links in the video description of the tools that I'm using today and what I like to use in my hobbying if you wanted to check them out and support the channel as well. Last step is the actual assembly of our models, and that means glue. Plastic cement is the industry standard for assembling our metal model kits and has been for years. But it's not always a perfect tool either. Not only will it not work on metal or resin kits, you're going to want to use super glue there, but it also doesn't do a very good job of actually filling gaps of when we assemble our models. And that's where the wonderful concoction known as sprue goo comes in. This is stuff you can make yourself. And I learned about it from my buddy Vince Vincerella a few years ago. And I've been tinkering with my own recipe since then. To make your own, just chop up some bits of extra sprue from your model kits into small little bits and throw them into a jar of half-filled plastic cement. I like to fill these up to just below the liquid line in the jar. Let it sit overnight, and when you come back, a nice, liquid, flowy goo will be there. You can always add more bits of sprue or more plastic cement later to get the consistency of the goo you're looking for. I've tested a bunch of different consistencies, and I prefer a nice, thick goo. You apply this stuff just like you would any other glue while building your models. I do like to put on a little bit extra though. This way, when I sandwich my two bits of the model together, a little bit of this goo squeezes out in the cracks. And then I come back through with my pure plastic cement and smooth over that bit that squeezed out and it completely erases any gap or line. This is such a massive time saver to have a perfect looking model in next to no time. Nobody wants to take their hundred built models and go through them with green stuff or Milliput or whatever other product on the market to try to gap fill. Here, we get it done right away in the same amount of time it would have taken us to build the model anyway. You can even use sprue goo for some basic sculpting. On the back of some of my zombie models, they have a flat back where there's supposed to be a stupid looking gravestone sticking out of that. I don't want that. So I'm gonna put a little sprue goo on his back, cover the hole, put a little bit of texture there to make it look like he's got some muscles and shoulder blades, and he's gonna look good as new without ever bringing out a separate product to sculpt. Sprue goo is also awesome when sticking our models to their bases because it's so thick, it just allows them to stick right there while the glue dries instead of having to sit and hold it for a couple of minutes before working on our next model. So we've covered our three aspects of building models to determine the best approach to do so, but now we need to stress test it. And what better way than to uh, do something really dumb, like see how long it takes me to build 120 zombies. Spoiler, it takes a long time, it's a lot of zombies. <laughs> So we're going to build these 120 zombies and not compromise quality on removing the mold lines, but still doing this as efficiently and fastly as possible. So I am going to go through these three tools. I'm going to start by snipping everything with my Tamiya clippers. I am then going to move on and use my double-sided sanding stick to remove all burrs and mold lines. And then I'm going to use my sprue goo plus plastic cement combo to build everything and get them on their bases. When I started this process, I just opened one box and started building models. Then it dawned on me that each of the boxes had the same models in there. So why wouldn't I open them all and just start clipping the exact same identical models from each box and then batch assemble them together? This sped up the process quite a bit. If you think about it, it goes much faster to build the same model 16 times in a row than it is to build one model and then another new one and then another new one. So there you go, do that. Using the ideal snippers and ideal mold line removal really helped me throughout the process of all 120. Sure, if I'm building five or 10 models, literally anything that I showed today would do a just great job. But every couple of seconds that I am saving and each step because of using this stuff really added up by the end. Now, I bet you're probably wondering what I'm gonna do with all these 120 zombies. And there's no way that I would possibly paint them all for one video especially not paint all 120 zombies in one day. There's no way I'd do that. 
Well, you're just going to have to subscribe to the channel and find out what I do. Because I was looking at my YouTube analytics the other day and it said that 65% of you that watch my videos aren't subscribed. What the hell, man? And while you're at it, mash all the other buttons on the screen right now like all those YouTubers tell you to do. And I'm not suggesting that you build your models in the way that I'm showing here with these 120 zombies. If you enjoy building models, the point of this process was to determine that if this can be done at such a high speed and still give a great result, that even building one and two models at your own pace will still give a great product. But if you're like me and you got a whole bunch of models to build, why not find the most efficient way to do so? By the time the dust had all settled and all 120 models were built, four hours and 42 minutes had passed. That means that it took about two minutes and 21 seconds per zombie. Now granted, these aren't massive models, but each zombie averaged four separate parts that needed to be all snipped, clean, glued, and base. Do you have a certain tool, tip, or technique that you use in building your models that I didn't cover today or you think might be useful to try out? Let me know in the comments below and I will try it out. Also, when it comes to painting these 120 zombies, I'm still searching for a theme, something that makes them super dead and super cool. If you have an idea, put that down in the video description. I'll be able to check those out. Not the video description. You can't write there. Only I can write there. Put it in the comments. Thank you for doing that. And maybe we'll come up with a good idea together to get these puppies painted. Thanks for hanging out today. I'm feeling pretty good after all those plastic cement fumes. If you like what I do and you want to support me as a creator, you can check out my Patreon in the description below. You get a bunch of fun rewards in addition to supporting me, things like my Discord channel where you can chat any day of the week and access to my weekly vlog videos. You can also do your shopping with my good partners in the description below like Monument Hobbies, Michigan Toy Soldier, and now for you people across the pond, Element Games, where you can get all your hobby needs at a discount and they give me a slight kickback for doing so. I will see you in the next video or maybe the previous video if you haven't watched those yet. Go back and watch those. And until then, get out there and slay the gray. Looks like you're elbow deep in the wrong side of a donkey. Hey, there's more than one way to skin a man. <laughs> He's got to get some stretches in. What the fuck? Why am I saying all that shit? A bunch of extra words. Stupid words. What does this mean?